All right, so we're going to be looking at your periodic table notes, and we're going to start with the paper that says Family Ties Student Worksheet. Um, as we go through this, we're going to talk about the periodic table. The periodic table is a list of all known elements. Um, as we've already talked about, it, it's organized by increasing atomic number. So it starts at the very top left with number one and works its way, its way all the way down to 118. And that atomic number tells us the number of protons. The table is also arranged in vertical columns called groups or families. These groups or families all share similar properties, so everything in the same family has similar properties. The horizontal rows that the periodic table is arranged by is called a period. This is the going across, um, and each period of the periodic table follows some trends as well. There are two main groups in the periodic table, um, metals and nonmetals. The left side of the table contains elements with the greatest metallic properties, and most of the periodic table is classified as metals. There is a zigzag line that goes above aluminum and goes down on the right side of the periodic table, and the elements that touch that zigzag line are called metalloids, and these have properties of metals and nonmetals. As you move from left to right across the periodic table, elements become less metallic. So the right side of the periodic table is, consists of nonmetals. Within the broad categories of metals and nonmetals, we have smaller groups or families. Remember, those are the vertical columns, our groups or our families. And the first group or family is called the alkali metals. These metals are extremely reactive. They're never found in nature in their pure form because they would react immediately. They're silver colored and shiny. And they have a very low density and they're very soft and they could even be cut with a knife. These are the first column of the periodic table. And these metals are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. The second group, or the second column of the periodic table, are the alkaline earth metals. They are slightly less reactive than alkali metals. They're silver colored still, but they are more dense than the alkali metals. This group consists of beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. The third main section of the periodic table are groups 3 through 12, and these are called our transition metals. These metals have a moderate range of reactivity, they have a wide range of property, and in general they're shiny, they're good conductors of heat and electricity, and they also have higher densities and melting points than groups 1 and 2. Transition metals are also called transition metals because their electrons are going to be more transitional. They have various numbers of valence electrons um, because they're using more of those outer shells. There are a lot of transition metals. The first few are going to be scandium, titanium, vanadium, and chromium but they go all the way from group 3 through group 12 and even include those two rows at the bottom as well. Now they're not on your paper, but groups 13, 14, 15, and 16, they do have names, but more often they're just called by the element at the top of the column. So the boron group, the carbon group, the nitrogen group, and the oxygen group. Group 17 are all nonmetals. They are very reactive, and they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They react with metals to form salts, and so sometimes they're called salt formers. They are called the halogens. The halogens group it consists of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. The elements in group 18, the very last column, are very unreactive, and they are said to be inert, which means they do not like to react with any other elements. And we call these the noble gases. They are all colorless, odorless gases at room temperature. They are all found in Earth's atmosphere in small amounts. Um, they consist of helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. 
The elements at the bottom of the periodic table were pulled out to keep the table from becoming too long. If both of those rows at the bottom were included where they actually fit into the table, then the periodic table would be very difficult to fit on a piece of paper. Um, the first period at the bottom is called the lanthanides, and if you look, that's because it starts with lanthanum, and lanthanum is number 57, so it would actually go right next to barium in the periodic table. The lanthanides are shiny and reactive. The second row, or the second period down at the bottom of the table, is called the actinides. This is part of period 7, and if you notice, actinium is, right, is number 89, which would be right next to radium in that period 7. All of the actinides are radioactive and therefore unstable and elements 95 through 103 do not exist in nature, but they are man-made elements. 